What's going on, friends? Welcome to the first series of building the Facebook clone. Right now, we're starting from the login screen. Hi, right? so friends. From our previous videos, we went through how to go by the React Native with export installations, right? And then we also went through how to integrate React Native Win into your React Native project. Over here, we are going to start building the real project, which is the Facebook clone. Right now, starting from the login screen, right? So, right in our app.js file, guys, clear everything here. We are starting everything from scratch all the way to the top, right? So, friends, get ready. I'm already, I'm so excited, pumped that I want this guy to finish this app, right? So, in our login screen, you're going to start here. So, first of all, guys, sit back, relax. As you already know, let's simplify this whole thing, right? Okay. So, in our app.js file, guys, what we're going to do is that we're going to import the view, right? Import view from React Native, okay? So we import the view from React Native, okay? Sure. Now from there, we are going to import the status bar, alright? So we import, import status bar, alright? Status bar. We are importing the status bar from the expo, not React Native, okay? From expo status bar. So we have to expose it by here. Okay. Alright. So the next thing we do is that we have to import React from React. Alright. Sure. So from here, we know that JavaScript functions in React Native are components, right? And in these components or these functions retain JSS elements. So we are going to see const app to create our JavaScript function, which is going to be a component. Equals. Then we have this here. Alright, so this to create our function, then we see that it has to retain JSS elements. Okay, so what is it going to retain? So we see retain, retain in here. Then inside here, we are going to retain our JSS elements. So what are some of the elements? We have view. Okay, so we are going to retain view in here. So view is I, okay, W, right. So, looking at the screenshot that I took of the Facebook login screen or the log login page here, you can see that we have the status bar on top here, right? And then down below the status bar, we have what we call the save area, okay? So, within the save area is where we have the login screen, okay? So, the first thing we're going to be doing here is to first put our status bar right on top there, okay? So, we're going to call our status bar in here. So, you see, status bar. Okay, now status bar is a self closing element, right? Then we have to style it. So we style this status bar. Mostly we give it auto so that it takes just the form of the background of the screen. Okay, so we give it auto. Alright, now we have the status bar. The next thing to have is the login screen itself. So we have the status bar on top and in the screen beneath it. So what we do is that. We go to our files here, and then within these files, we, we hit on this button here, and then we create a directory. Now we give the name of the directory as SRC. So we have an SRC folder here. Now within this SRC folder, we are going to create another folder within the SRC folder called screens, okay? Then, so you can see screens over here. Now within these screens also, we create a file rather now we put a file now within the screens we, we, we create a file and it will give the name of the screen as login screen okay so you can see that i have login screen this is now a file so login screen.js a file okay so this file is going to contain everything that we're going to be doing within the login screen okay all right so now we have our login screen so make sure you capitalize it start with a capital l like that you capitalize it as you as you give it a name. all right so now that we have our login screen you will navigate to where our login screen is, right? And then what we see here is that you can use the React Native snippet, that's the React Native functional exponent, right? Then if the, our internet gives us a prompt, then we're going to write everything. But if it doesn't, we come back and then we do everything, okay? So we can clean that here. Then go back. Let's import our React Native login screen. So we have a, you see, import the login screen. From where? Where did we save our login screen? We have it at the SRC folder, right? At the screens. And in the name of it, inside the screen, we have the file login screen, 
right? All right. So you don't add the .js because this is a .js file, so you don't, you don't need to add a login screen to .js file in it. All right. So here we can call the login screen. So it's a login screen. So in here, because login screen is being called as a component, it's going to be self-closing. So you do this for a slash and then greater than. All right. So to make this app the JS accessible throughout the whole app that we are building, you see export default app. So export export default 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 you see app. All right. So now we have our login screen and we also have our status bar. So now that we have to that we have to go and then actually create the login screen because now we don't actually have it, right? We only have a template of it. So we save and then we go to our login screen to actually build the login screen, right? So let's go to the login screen. So here is our login screen again. To build our login screen, here's what we are going to be doing. So we want to again import the view, okay? We import view from where? From React Native. Alright. So now we have our view. The next thing is to also import the React Native again. Right? So you import React from React. Right? That's quite funny, right? You're importing right from Re React from React. <laughs> Alright. So again, we are going to be creating the, the function. Always going to be the name of the component. So login screen. So const login screen. Okay. So this is going to be the function. Login screen. Then this is greater than here and then that. Now we said it's going to return something. So return. Right. We're going to return this, the GSS elements. Right. All right. So now inside this login screen, let's go. Let's look at the screenshot we have over. Here. So within this login screen, okay. So let's not forget to add export to make the login screen accessible. We say export default. You see login screen. All right. So within here, you can see that within this login screen, we say that the login screen actually is within how do you call it? Is within a save area view. Now to get access to the save area view for Android or for building Android apps, you need what we call the save the React Native save area context. So you need to go to your web browser so that you can install the React Native save area context within your app. So this is the React Native documentations for Expo. So you go to the Expo documentations and then within the Expo documentation, this is the link. The link is on top here. I'll leave the link also in the description. So you copy this code over here, then you go back to your VS code, you paste the code within your terminal, make sure you have navigated to the Facebook room before you paste it and then you hit enter to install it. So once you install it, now you can import the real native save area context, alright? So you say import React native save area context, alright? So you first import the save area view from where? From the React native save area context right. nice so now we can actually use the save area view within our project so we can see save area view save area view all right nice so now within the save area view now we can have other things to also do right so you can see that within the save area view, within this view under the status bar, we have English US. Now this English US is actually a button. Like it's actually a button. So what we have to do is that we have to import a button into our project so that we can use the button anytime the user presses on this English to change the language of Facebook. Okay. So what we are going to be doing is that again, we go to our web browser. Then we go to the real native official documentation, the real native elements official documentation. Okay. So this is the link. I also leave the link to it in the description. So when you go to the official documentation, you're going to have the installation process. We have npm install at React Native Elements UI forward slash team at React Native Elements UI forward slash B. So you copy this code here. Then you go back to your VS code, okay? And you paste the code in here. You hit enter to install it, right? So once you do that, you can now import buttons from the React Native Elements. 
So you come here and say import. And what are we importing? We are importing button. Okay. That's capital. Button from apps. React native element UI forward slash team. Right. So that's how we import it. Alright. So the next thing we do is that now we can call the button from the screenshot that I took. So you can see we can now design this button here. Alright. <clears throat> so inside here, what we are going to be doing is that we call the button. So we see button. Now button is a self-closing element, right? So self-closing tax here. Alright. This one button here. <clears throat> now the properties for this button element when you go to the react native website you get access to all these properties so you visit the website i'll leave the link in the description and know all about how you go around the properties of a button so every button has a title right so but title right and the title of this button is english as you can see from the top so that's english and it is us so english us right then again another property that we can pass that the type of the button the type of this button is clear it's a clear button now we have a solid button this login is here is a solid button this forget password is a clear button and then this green new green new account here is an outline button so the type of this button this english us here is a clear button okay then we come down again another property we can pass the title style the title style okay now what is the title what's the style of this the, the style of this title here so we say s i'll come back to this s later now the s here now if you look at this title here you can see the title the color of this text here is black all right so we can see back ticks here and then we say text black all right then the next thing we have to do is that the button style so we see button style okay and the button style again we are going to pass s and then back ticks and then we see mt-2 right now this mt-2 means that the margin at the top you can see we have the status bar on top here and then we have this button here but there's a space between this button and then the status bar here so we want there to be a space that's the margin at the top right and we see the margin should be two now you can see that i'm using something called an s so this is actually from the real native elements that we talked about so the real native when styling component we talked about in the previous video so in order to use it you have to import that one also so import now we import s okay we import s from the react native wing react native wing all right so again you can see that all the elements that are inside the save area view the elements inside the save area view, everything inside the save area view is actually at the center kind of centered in the in this on the screen right you see everything is kind of in the center of the screen they are away from the edges of the screen so to do that we can actually style this whole style this whole save area view so to style it we are going to say style <clears throat> right we say s then back ticks so the syntax of that's the syntax for react native wind then we see pattern we give the pattern to be four then we say justify center justify center okay then we also say items center so we want to put the items inside the safe area view at the center of the screen all right and then we want to justify everything should just be at the center all right sure so now that we have gone through the first button the next thing to do now is to go through this image that we have here now to get this image what we have to go is that we have to go to google right we go to google and then we search for a facebook logo so you, you look for a facebook logo you're going to get one and when you get this one you download using save image as as you get a pdf a pn a png form of it then you go to remove bg which is a website now this remove the bg is going to remove the background of the image for you right so you upload the image here and then it removes the background so once you have the, the the background removed you can save the image within your facebook clone project right so how do you save it here you create another folder within the src so you can see within this src that i have here within this src i've created another folder called assets right and then within this assets i have another folder called images and then they have saved all the images that i'll be using for this project inside of it 
so you can see that i have the facebook logo here i also have the meta logo also in there right so that's what you do you search on google find the image and then you remove the background and then you save the image within your project all right sure so now after doing that we are going to import that image that we just talked about which is the the logo right so what we're going to do is we're going to say import logo we want to import the logo right from the location we just talked about so we said it was in the assets folder right and we created another folder called images and then we place it in there so we say logo dot png now we're adding the png because this the, the image is not a, a js file right so you add a png to it so now we can call this this image within our project right the logo within our project now we know that the, the logo is actually an image so in order to also use the image you have to use something a, pro, a, a component called image now images are also self-closing right sorry images are also self-closing so in here you pass this here right now within this image you make sure you have to make sure you import this image within your react native so you come here and then you import image here right so you pass in image so that you know that you are using the image from react native so you come here to the image now the first property of an image is the source so what is the source of this image so you see source and then the source is a logo so when it gets to find what this logo is it will know that we are talking about this logo that are, this logo here so you can see logo and then the logo the pin so you're going to get it right now we want to style this logo you can see that the, the logo that we are going to be getting is very huge right we want to make it very small and it should fit the size of our screen right so you're going to adjust the height the width and also make it a little more nice on our, on our screen right all right so it's going to show you we see that it is very very big all right i think i'm having some issues here so it's going to load though you see it's, it's very huge here right so we want to make it very small in our app so to style that we come here to our login screen sorry. so in our login screen we say style right equals then we have this so s from the real native we need because we are styling using real native with them back ticks, right then we want the height to be 14 just 14 we want the width to be also 14 right and then again we want the margin around it to be 20 margin around it to be 20. now why do we want the margin around it to be 20 as you can see over here this, there's a big margin around this facebook yes from the safe area view we know it's going to be at the center right item center and then in the button here we want the space around it to be what a margin of 20 a margin around it from the top bottom left right all to 20 right sure so now we are done with our image the next thing we do is that you can see we have text input here right so to use text input you have to import text input also from react native so we have to use the text input here so we go here and say text text input right now text input is also self-closing right now we're going to be doing two text input so you can copy and then you paste it right because you know we'll be, we'll be doing two of them and make sure you import it now there are so many ways you, can, you can actually do control space bar to import it or you can just come here and then type it in right text input sure so now within it text input we are there are a lot of things you are going to be doing inside so there are properties that we can pass into our text input okay so the first thing is that when you look at this text input we have the mobile number or email as the placeholder so you can see that it is telling the user giving the user a hint on what to type inside that text input which is the placeholder so we say placeholder All right so the placeholder here is going to be mobile number or email All right so we say mobile number or email sure now we want to make this auto focus when i say auto focus i mean the, the moment the user opens the app the focus there should be um, a case that, that is blinking within this text input asking the user that this is the first thing you're supposed to do so he's putting the focus over there that inputs your email or your mobile number all right then the next thing you're going to do is that you pass in the value so the value is going to be email right that will be the variable we create and we say on change text on change text so you're going to pass in set email all right 
on change text set email all right all right so what this means is that you know the user will be typing in text into this text text input field right and the text will keep changing as the user types in different text so what we want is that we are setting a variable for email that's going to keep that and if we are also creating another function called set email that will keep updating us anytime the user puts in a new variable and a new text into the text input field so you know that within this text input field the state of it is going to be changing anytime the user types in a different text so if you are typing your email let's say dennis at gmail.com you keep texting right different different characters until you are done so you want to keep track of these changes that are actually okay so to do that we're going to use something called a use state Right, so inside here, we are going to create so a const and then we create an array and we say email and we say set email, right? Then we say equals use it. We are aware that the text that the user will be inputting there is going to keep changing, so we want to keep track of it so that we save it within the set email and keep it as the user's email, right? That's why we are doing the use state to keep track of the user's text changes over time, right? Uh, sure. So the next thing we're going to be doing next is for the password. Now, before we go to the password, we want to style this text input field. You can see that it has a border, right? So we say S and then back text. We want to give it a border. Not just that, it has a border color too. So the border color of gray. So you want the border to be gray. And then let's give it a shade of 400, right? Then let's make the pattern 3. You can see that the mobile, the placeholder is not attached to the edge of the text input, right? It's not attached to the edge of the border. It's kind of away from it. So we give it a border of 3, just as the user will input. And then the text input field is also rounded. Right, so we give it rounded. Let's give it. Let's make it more rounded. Let's say extra large. All right, and then you can see that the width of this text input is not attached. It's not attached to here. Right, it's not attached to the the edges of the screen. It's kind of away from it. Right, it's it's covering just about ninety percent of the width of the screen. So we say the width should be nine, just ninety percent, which is eleven on twelve. So when you go to the Real Native Wind website, you can get used to the syntax that I'm using over here. All right. So we are done with the first one. So the second one we're going to do is the password. So we can actually copy everything in here. We can copy everything here and then paste it in there. All right. So we are going to be changing this one to password. That is password, right? So you say password. Then we don't. This time we don't want to make it auto focus. We want to make it secure text entry. So anytime the user types in the password, you will see the, 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 the characters being replaced by some dark dots, right? Sure. And then at the value here, we're going to be passing in password, not email. This time we're doing the password. And then here we see set password. The style is going to be the same as the one on top. So we go to the top again. Because the user will be typing in a password and the text is going to keep changing. We want to keep track of it. So we say password by using the use state. So we say password, it says set password. Right? And then equals use state. So we want to keep track of the changes in the state of this text input field by using the use state to keep track anytime the user makes changes to it. So again, you have to import this. Make sure you have imported the use state into your, your project, else you are going to be having some little errors, right? So in your React, you come here and then you make sure you have imported it. So you import the use state inside. All right. So we are done with the two text input fields. Now we can move on to the button. So you have a login button here, the forgot password button, the create new account button, the last one is the image. So for the buttons in React, using React Native Elements, we want to put them inside a view, right? We want to put all the these three buttons inside one view, right? So you create a button here. Now buttons are self-closing, right? You're going to create three of the buttons. So copy, paste, paste, right? Sure. So you have three buttons in here. So inside the first button, the title of this button is login. The title of this button is login. So you say title, and then we give it a title of 
login right now the type of button here is is a solid button right the type of button is a solid button you realize that english here was was a clear button now all buttons are by default solid so we can actually ignore the, the type here and move to the next one because by default they are solid right and then the next thing we do here is they say on press let me see the user presses this button we want something to happen right we want the user to be logged in but then we are not we won't be working on this right now we want the user to log into the app right so you say login so we're working on this so that's why i've just commented it we'll work on it later then the next the next thing that we want to start is button so it's a button style because then i use this one and say s and back ticks, right now how do you want to start this we want the as you can see the button you can see that the button is rounded is, is it just rounded it also has a margin at the top so let's make it two times right and then the margin at the top the margin at the top is you can see that the button the login button here there's a space between it and then the, the text input password here that's the margin at the top so you say empty make it four Alright, so we are leaving kind of a space between this button and then the text input view here. We are also making sure that the button is also rounded, alright? So the next thing we do here is to move to the next button. And the next button is the forgot password. So the title of this button is going to be forgot password. So, forgot password. okay now we have our title what type of button is the forgot password remember that it is a clear the type is clear right it's a clear button there's nothing surrounding you can see it is purely clear just the text that you see all right so it's just clear then we have to also style this button you can see that the the, the there's a space between the forgot password and then the login password right so you have to style the margin at the the margin at the top so it's a button style and then we say s then back to, to style it now to style it we're going to see that margin at the top so that's empty we give it four so there should be a space between this forgot password and then this login button all right all right nice so the next thing we're going to do is then the create new account the create new account so for the create new account the title again is going to be create new account right create new accounts okay and then the type here is outline button the type is an outline so when you go to when you visit the documentation for react native elements you can see all these properties i'm talking about so the type is outline sorry not clear it's outline right so we have solid clear and then outline so here we use the outline so you can see that there's of something around it there's an outline around it right all right and then you're going to be styling it also so you see bottom style bottom style because and then you see s and then back ticks so you see it is rounded you can see that even though it is it is it's an, it's, it's an outline it's also rounded right so you see around it now is it just rounded we want to make it more rounded so you see two extra large and then empty now you can see that this screen new password is far away from the forgot password it's kind of at the bottom of the screen right so we give it a margin top of around 28 which you move to the bottom of the screen all right now you want to ask the user presses on this button you should move the user to the register screen but you're not there so you're going to move it and then move to the next one so the last thing you're going to be doing is the meter the meter image all right so we're going to move outside the view of these buttons and then get into this area, save area view, all right? And then create the image. Remember, we have already imported the image. We said the image are self-closing. And then the first property we pass here is the source, all right? The source. So you see source. What is the source here? So the source we are going to be using here is the meter logo, all right? So you're going to put the meter logo inside here. So you go to the top and then make sure you import it. So import the meter logo from we know it is at received it at the assets right 
assets then images then the name of it was the meta logo dot png right the meta logo dot png right nice so make sure that you go to the google you search for the meta logo then you download it remove the background using remove the bag then save it within your real native project folder right when you save it in there then you make sure you save it under the assets and in the images and then now you can import it within your project just i've done it over here. so i've named the meta project and i've i've poured it over here down here as source so i'm going to get the meta image over there then what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to style it so i'll say style equals so i'll say s and then back ticks then i want to give you some pattern of four right so let's say a pattern of four and then i'll give it a height of 10 make it very small and then i want i want its width to be around let's say 20 percent right very very small like in reality when we use fractions for percentages so let's say one on five right and then we say empty that's the margin at the top we want the image to be a little away from the create new button okay so the margin at the top we are going to give it just two, just a little from it okay all right so then make sure that you export default login screen over here all right friends. so we can see we here and the next thing we're going to be doing is that we are going to be running our code by using npm start here so we say npm start and then we are going to run it to see that are there any bugs you're supposed to fix to make sure our code runs or if there are anything we're just going straight to build the ui for the login screen and in the next series we are going to be going through how to use navigation to get your other screens and the register screen the main screens and the others and also how to use the fire firebase authentication to authenticate any user that actually signs into our app. all right so this is the this is the code so far let me enlarge it all right so that you can see everything that we have done so far so you can see it here so we started by importing everything okay and then we created a function, the login screen, which contained almost everything. All right? We imported the use this and everything here. All right? So this is it for the login screen. So I'm going to run it, and then we will see how it goes. Then within our app.js file too, we have this. Okay. So I'm Control C. Now let's run it to see how everything goes. So npm start. <laughs> 